This is not easy in any way, shape, or form. This is definitely something I did not want to do, ever. But here we are, and it's unfortunate. My condolences go out to Ken's family. Lucy, Leah, Kira, and Micah, you guys are definitely in my thoughts. I've been playing this in my head and all the things that I've experienced with Ken and everything that he's done for me for the past couple months. And I figured I would just put it out there and let you guys know how much of a difference he played on my life. There's just no question in my mind that Ken was the greatest ambassador for car culture of our time. I feel so honored to have been able to capture so many moments with him throughout a big portion of my career. For that, I will be forever grateful. Personally, Ken has done so much for me. Without a doubt, my most famous photo to date was of Ken sliding Evo Corner on Climbcana at Pikes Peak. Because of Ken, no matter where I am in the world, I look around, if I'm at a car event, if I'm in an airplane, if I'm in the airport, I know so many of these strangers have seen my photographs because of Ken. One of the last times I saw Ken, I was in the Toyota SEMA booth which used to be the Ford booth. He was walking through, talking with a couple friends, and I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, hey, sir, are you lost? He had a good chuckle and it was so much fun for me to catch up with him. We actually talked about Tokyo Auto Salon and how he was going and how I was doing a bunch of shooting there. And of course, he never made it. That's where I actually I was when I heard the news. This has affected me dramatically, honestly, more than I thought something like this would. I've been thinking about these stories since his passing over and over in my head, just replaying them. And I realize that this affects me and a few other individuals differently just because of what we were tasked to do. So it's me, Ron Carr, Louis Yeo, Tony Harmer, Mike Blaybeck. Us five have hundreds of thousands of photos of Ken. We're just there to capture his moments with his fans, in his race car, with his family, by himself, doing his thing, when he's at his best and at his worst. We capture him in so many different ways and it's just a different kind of relationship. All of our jobs were to document Ken to our best abilities whether the video cameras were rolling or not. The first time I met Ken was all the way back in 2007 at El Toro Air Force Base where they actually filmed Gymkhana 1. We were there for a local grassroots Gymkhana event called American Gymkhana. And of course, Ken Block was a star. He had the Crawford Performance Subaru STI out there. And of course that was the fastest vehicle out there. It had the most power. And I found myself lined up against him at the Christmas tree. As you know, Gymkhana is two mirrored courses and it starts like a drag race. 
So when I pulled up to the line in my 1970 240Z with 143 horsepower, I looked over and I saw Ken Block and I'm like, I have to do my best to tree him. So as soon as I saw the light start to go down, I just let go of the clutch. And it's funny, after all these years, there's a video of it on YouTube and it shows me like leaving the line first, but not a microsecond later, he just floors it and just blows me out of the water. That was before Jim Gymkhana won. That was before any time we saw a video from Ken, but we already knew of his stature and we already knew that he was the real deal. The fact that he would come and hang out with us at a local grassroots event really spoke volumes. A couple years go by, I had a chance to shoot him a couple times at X Games, but it wasn't until Jim Gymkhana 4 when I actually had a chance to work with Ken one-on-one. -on -one. I'll never forget it, when I stepped on set for the very first time, I knew I was in the big leagues. It was incredible. It was over 100 people on set, and it was just something I've never been a part of. It was something so grand. As you guys know, it was shot in the Universal back lot. And I'll never forget it, the tram that normal people from Universal Studios can take to actually check out the back lot was running. And they would constantly shuttle people by as we were filming. And I just thought it was the funniest thing. Like we were just eating lunch, we were just doing our thing. And anytime a tram came by, we would kind of just wave. And we were thinking like, yeah, this is a normal thing, right? You know, you take the tram at Universal and then you get to see Ken Block just hanging out in the back lot. Ken actually came up to me and he asked me if we watch his videos. If I've seen Jim Gymkhana one through three and what I thought about them, I just was so blown away. I was thinking, Maybe he didn't know I was a car fanatic. Maybe he didn't realize that a couple of years ago, I lined up against him at Gymkhana. But it, it was interesting, you know, he, he, he wanted to know what I thought. This was on the War of the World set. Immediately after that conversation, I asked him if I could take some portraits of him at the wrecked 747. You know, I made him buckle in to one of the seats I made him climb into the set and it was just so surreal for me to actually be able to work with him in this capacity. I was just so proud of those photos and what came out from Jim Gymkhana 4 kind of set me up to be able to work with Ken and the Hoonigan guys from then on. I was still pretty early in my career in that I would take anything I could get and I really wanted to get my photos in front of as many eyes as possible. So when I became the official photographer for Formula Drift in 2012, it was a really big deal for me. The Hoonigan guys called me right after I got that gig and they asked me to come on to shoot the set of Jim Gymkhana 5. As you guys know, that probably will be the grandest Gymkhana of all time. You know, San Francisco, in terms of a location and a shutdown, it's never gonna be topped. I went back and forth because um, that means I would have had to miss Formula Drift Atlanta, which is the second round, second time ever being the official photographer. I talked to the guys at Hoonigan and I, just weighed my options. I was thinking, ah, maybe I can make it for one or two days. But then I realized that I just had to stick with what I already committed to. And I just had to focus on being the official photographer for Formula Drift, which I still am after all these years and just miss Jim Gymkhana 5. In terms of career decisions, that's without a doubt my biggest regret because it's never gonna happen again. And of course, with my luck, Gym 6 came around and I couldn't make that either, again, because of Formula Drift. And on top of that, that was filmed where they filmed Gymkhana 1 at El Toro Air Force Base, the same place that I lined up against Ken 
at American Gymkhana. The next time I actually had a chance to work with Ken was when he wanted to prove that he could full course drift Irwindale Speedway with an all-wheel drive vehicle. I was so excited to be able to shoot stills for that. And I wrote an article on Speed Hunters and Ken actually had a chance to read it and check out the photos. And the next time I saw him was at Global Rallycross. It was the opening ceremonies. He was next to his car. It was in front of all the photographers, the fans, the media, all of that. He just left his car, went up to me and told me how much he loved the article and how much he loved the photos. I just started to blush. I was so red and I was just happy, but a little embarrassed. But the fact that he would compliment me out in public in front of all of my peers just meant the world to me. And that really pushed me to want to work with them even more. After missing out on Gym 5 and 6, luckily, Gym Kana 7 was in my home city of Los Angeles. It was so cool to be able to be a part of the Hoonicorn launch. And it was just amazing to be a part of this massive project. I grew up in Los Angeles and the fact that we were able to have these dream locations to shoot, to slide a car around, to enjoy, to create these iconic photos, it's just something out of a dream. It's epic. You know, being able to stand on the 105 freeway interchange or above the Hollywood sign right next to Homeland Security, you know, doing handstands on the 710 freeway. It's just so crazy. I just never thought I would be able to do these things. And because of Ken and the whole crew, this was possible. He just created this ultimate platform for us to be able to create these images to promote car culture, to promote just these extraordinary things. Soon after shooting with Ken and the crew on Gymkhana 7, that's when things really heated up. I became an embedded photographer with the crew. So when they went to rally races, when they went testing, anytime they needed a photographer, I really went out of my way to try to be there, be embedded with them. I was staying at the same places they were staying. I was in their rental car, in the airport, flying with them. And I was just trying to do my best to tell their story. So it was me, uh, his manager, Matt, uh, his photographer, social media guy, Ron. It was his family, Lucy, Leah, Kira, Micah. You know, I watched them grow up through my lens. The thing that I realized as time went on is that Ken actually trusted me to show him and anything he did in the best light possible. In fact, I actually shot an underwear campaign with him as well. He always had a lot on his plate. No matter what we were doing, something was going on. Car was broken, stunt wasn't working right. Who knows, there was always something on Ken's mind and he was always all over the place in terms of what he had to do when he was on set or when he was racing. And I would always ask for his time and he would always give it to me because he always wanted to make sure that I got the shot that I was looking for. And that is so special because there's so many other athletes and so many other people that I've worked with that just could care less. And it wasn't just me. He offered his time to so many other content creators. He always did it for the shot. He was also a very big critic of my work. 
He would tell me when I would drop the ball, when something just didn't look right or didn't look good. So it actually elevated my game that much more because I always wanted to make sure that it was up to Ken's standards, which were very, very high. No matter what we were shooting, it could be something so small or it could be Gymkhana. I would always bring my A game. Come hell or high water, if I had a fever, if I was hurting in some way, if I wasn't feeling good, if my camera was broken, no matter what, I would push 110% to make sure I got the best stuff possible. And honestly, that goes for a lot of content creators that fortunately had a chance to work with him. We've been able to do so many projects together, but there's one that kind of stands out in that I actually had a chance to be in front of the camera for once. Back in 2015, Need for Speed rebooted their whole brand and they came out with an all new video game with real life characters. Ken, Vongin Jr., Magnus Walker, Bissimoto, Steph Papadakis, the list goes on. It was just so many people and we were all in London for like two weeks. It was just such a fun shoot because I shot a bunch of still photos. I was part of the video game. I was in the cutscenes, And also I shot a lot of film photos that just meant so much to me. I got some nice shots of Nikai-san, my friends from the Risky Devils. It was just a good crew. And it was the first time that all of these different icons had a chance to hang out with each other and hang out with Ken Block. It was so cool. Being on screen together with Ken was surreal because even to this day, people take screenshots and people send me clips and they're like, hey, is that you in this video game? While we were in London for that period of time, Ken actually tipped me off on this project that he was thinking about working on, which was Climbcana. Taking the Hoonicorn to the next level, version two, instead of naturally aspirated 800 horsepower, it turned into a 1400 horsepower beast. Climbcana as a project was collectively one of the hardest projects that I think we ever worked on. What people don't realize is that they actually shot that over three separate trips, over a span of a year and a half, over 12 days on that mountain. First time we went up there, the hopes were high and there was just so much to do in so little time. Unfortunately, the car did not cooperate. We were able to get some things that made it into the final film but uh, it just didn't work out. We go out there a second time. The car worked for a little bit, but it didn't last so long. So of course, that means we had to wait till the next year, to the next season. Everything just went wrong. There was snow, hail, sleet, rain, horrible conditions, lightning, if you could believe it. Everything went wrong on the set of Klamkana, and somehow we were able to eke out all of this good content and footage. The third time we went was the best time because the Hoonigan Racing Team finally figured out how to make that motor work at peak efficiency, at altitude, make all that power, and it was just incredible. That's when we were able to shoot that very iconic shot of Ken sliding over Evo Corner. Two tires on, two tires off, shooting GoPros into oblivion. It was absolutely incredible. I remember it like it was yesterday. The first try, he did it and everybody's heart sank because it was just so death defying and it just was crazy. I mean, this vehicle was built for filming and it wasn't built for tumbling down the mountain if he went off. So everybody, you know, had that in their mind and when he did it for the first time, we're like, all right, you have to do it again because it was kind of like a half slide and we knew Ken had it in him. And I knew 
that I wanted this iconic shot. I really, really wanted to do a stitch that was a one by three ratio, something that I could print huge. I had a 1DX Mark II, 135 F2. I shot it at 2.8. I locked the focus and as time was going on and we were waiting for Ken to come around the corner, the clouds were going in and out, in and out. And I kept having to do the panorama shot from where I was standing. I was at the very next corner. Scotto was behind me. Uh, Matt Johnston, the video guy was right in front of me. And it was just three of us on this tiny little ledge. I kept doing it because as soon as the light conditions would change, I had to do it again. And it was about 20 pictures that I would stitch together. And then that one frame of Ken would just be a single full frame shot from my DSLR. So when he actually came around the corner, full tilt, guns blazing, two tires off, shooting all this dirt, I just laid down on that shutter like my life depended on it. And I just kept shooting. And what people don't realize is he actually linked the corner afterwards. So he just barely grazes us, us three on the ledge with the nose of his car. I'll never forget it. It was just so close to our shins. It was just incredible. I just was so excited. And you guys could see in the Amazon Prime special that they did on Clemcana, you can just see my face. Like I was just so excited going up to Ken, you know, with the photo on the back of my screen and just shoving it in front of his face. Just so proud of this photo that I know will become a stitch, but I had no idea it would become so iconic. Shooting with Ken has taken me to some of the craziest places in the world. For Gym 8, we actually found ourselves in the UAE, in Dubai and in Abu Dhabi. And it was just so crazy to see the car culture out there. They ate it up. They loved Ken so much. And I was just able to get all of these iconic photos. I actually have a story about one of my favorite photos from Gymkhana 8. I just was about to sign my contract with Canon cameras as a explorer of light. I would be their first ever automotive photographer. I went to New York where their headquarters are located and I was to speak at the Javits Center on the Canon stage to the Photo Plus audience. I was walking around with all of the Canon executives, all the explorers of lights, all of the Canon folks. And we just happened to walk by, I think it was like at AM, PM or something. I just pointed at the window. It was this huge picture that I shot of Ken from Gymkhana 8. It was a monster advertisement, but it was just front and center. And it couldn't have been better timing for me to kind of show these guys that I'm actually able to contribute in this way. And that's kind of a thing that I think about all the time. You know, when you're working with somebody like Ken, you're transcending car culture. It's beyond just this small community. It is a global thing and it's mainstream culture. I definitely got emotional when I heard what Gym 10 was to become. It was pretty much, not so much the last Gymkhana, but it was the last of its kind. And I thought it was cool that it was a multi-part series. And I was very excited to be a part of this project. So I split duties with Louis Yeo. He covered a couple of them because I couldn't make it to all of them because of Formula Drift, of course. But I was able to shoot the one in Texas. I was able to shoot the one in Los Angeles and I was able to shoot the one in Guanajuato, Mexico. I'll never forget it. It was such a good marker on my career. The way I think about it, it's everything before Gym 10 and everything after Gym 10. Up until that point, Ken has made such an impact on my career and my life. There's just no way to discount it. It's just never gonna be the same without him. And of course, we're all gonna miss him 
I'm definitely gonna miss him. One of my favorite parts of Gym 10 was being on set in Mexico because that was actually my first dive into video. It was the first time that I actually wanted to show how the meat was made, how I created these photos. And it was such an honor at that time to be able to contribute to the Hoonigan bonus channel, as well as the Hoonigan Tangents show that they had on Fridays. It was a time in my life where I was transitioning from just being a photographer to being somebody in front of camera as well. And that was just the perfect time and it gave me the perfect platform to tell my story. It was very early on in my video production, so it wasn't the best video, but why not kick it off with Ken Block? In the car, he's belting up, getting ready to warm up. Just from being able to tell my story from Jim 10 has led me up to now. This channel wouldn't exist without Ken and Hoonigan. All the shows that I do, everything that I do in front of camera started right there. One of the funniest moments for me on the set of Jim 10, which I actually got on video, was when this uh, female fan broke through security somehow, snuck onto set, and just embraced Ken. Like r right when she saw him, she just melted. And uh, it, it was very, very touching, I guess. It was interesting to see. She started just bawling her eyes out. And um, I panned from Ken and this woman to Matt, his manager, and just deadpan, he looked at me and he said, I've never had a woman get this excited about me. And I just, I was just so excited to be able to get that moment. I just thought it was so funny. And I just kind of replayed this in my head. But uh, yeah, it was hilarious. Cue the video. Well, thank you for being a fan. Ideally, they should be I've never had a woman be that enthusiastic about me <laughs> in my entire life. There's so many moments that I remember with Ken, but specifically, there's one that really stood out to me. In 2020, the shutdown, as you guys probably can imagine, affected so many creatives so many photographers. There was a point where we pretty much didn't work for four months. We had so many gigs lined up and everybody just canceled. And I never got any calls during this time. My good friend Von Gittin Jr. launched his Ford Mach-E 1400. And of course he invited Ken Block with the Unicorn to join this epic video of all of these amazing Ford vehicles. And this was the very first project that we were back on from the shutdown. The shutdown affected me so much. I broke out on hives. I just was so stressed out and I just could not imagine things getting better. It was just a rough time. I had a chance to talk to Ken. I actually shuttled him around in my Toyota Supra because uh, it was really hot. It was in the middle of summer and I had the AC blasting all the time. So he would come in, hang out with me, and we would just chat it up. And there was so many things that we talked about, but talking with him kind of reassured me that things would eventually be okay. Sheepishly, I asked him if he could help me out and if he could sign posters for me so I can sell them and I can sell them to you guys. He agreed to me right away without any hesitation or any question. He's like, whatever you want, I'll sign anything you want. I, I was just so blown away because that single-handedly saved us so much. I mean, we had nothing. But the fact that he was just so generous in that way and 
to so many other people, so many other photographers and so many other fans. You know, I would just watch him sign autographs for hours at a time. I mean, the, these people that were fans of his were just ravenous. It was something I've never seen before with any other personality. I remember specifically when we were in Europe, when I was following him, when he was doing WRC, they would hand out posters that he would sign. And this poster would basically get handed to this person, but it would just get ripped up into like 10 different pieces from the entire crowd just grabbing at this poster. And these individuals were so happy just to get a little piece of this poster that he signed. Maybe not even the piece that he signed, but it was just a piece of paper that Ken actually touched. It was incredible. Aside from that, Ken actually signed a lot of charity prints for me for really good causes. And the fact that he just goes out of his way to do such simple gestures means so much to me. And I feel like everybody else that he's helped. Because of efforts from Ken and the Hoonigans, I got extremely busy coming out of the shutdown. 2021 and beyond has been absolutely insane for us. And that brings me to honestly one of my biggest personal regrets. As you guys probably know, Ken is such a big family man. He always has been able to incorporate his family in what he's doing. That's why I had a chance to know his family. You know, whenever he was racing, whenever he was filming, his family was around. And no matter how busy he was, he was always able to spend time with his family. At one point, he invited me and my family to hang out at his place, but I was just so busy and selfishly, I thought, you know what? When I have a little more free time, I'll come and hang out. But of course, he got busy, I'm busy, and it just never happened. On a lighter note, Ken and I had this fun thing going. We actually have a folder on our server called Blocks Finger. And what it is, is it's a collection of photos of Ken flicking me off. Because for whatever reason, he thought it was funny to essentially ruin my photo. Whether he's like suiting up and he just like lets a finger go, or he's in the car waiting on grid and he just kind of sticks his finger out real quick. It's just kind of like a, a lighter, more fun moment that I just kind of have to double take because sometimes I notice it right away. You know, I take the picture, I laugh, he laughs, it's a funny thing. But the best is when he does it and I find out later that he did it. And that means obviously I can't use the photo, but it's something that I can keep for my collection. And now finally you guys get to see some of these photos, but it's just so many of them. And that's kind of a way I know that he's in a good mood, you know? He's like joking around on set, racing or whatever, just flipping the bird. And this really showed that no matter how busy he was and no matter how stressed out he was, he always made time to have fun and not take things too seriously and joke around. That's one of the things I really loved about working with Ken and the rest of the Hoonigans. We were just a bunch of friends, not coworkers. We just had cameras and cars. Electricana was an interesting one. It was the ultimate shutdown. It was downtown Vegas, middle of the strip, all these iconic locations in Vegas that I've been around my entire life. Now, when I drive down the strip, I look at all these places where I stood shooting pictures of Ken and I just, it just brings me back. It's just so different. It changed that place for me. Electricana was also interesting in that Ken was really battling that car. It was something that he's never really driven before and it was something that was completely different compared to all the other vehicles. Ken being Ken, you know, he's the wheel man. 
He's just so good at what he does. He did his best. And for what that car was, I think he did such a great job. And the imagery for me really stands out. It was without a doubt some of the best photos that I've taken that year, if not of all time. What was really crazy to me was that the car itself didn't move like anything else. It just didn't look real. It looked like it was in fast forward. And one of the things that really was hard to convey on video was how loud it actually was. I actually had to wear earplugs, even though it was electric, the tires and the noise, the mechanical noise it made was so loud. And it was just something that was just so piercing. It was just something that I've never experienced before. And it was really cool to be a part of that project. When I think about all of these things that I've talked about, there's just so many more moments and so many stories that I have. But these are the ones that kind of stand out. And these are the ones that really are near and dear to my heart. I've been shooting photos for 19 years now, and this is obviously something that I'm gonna have to deal with more and more as time goes on, but it's never gonna be easy. My job was to photograph this man and his amazing ideas and his creations and the people that surrounded him. And I'm just so lucky to have had the opportunity to do so. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Ken, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm gonna miss you. I think everybody will miss you. I try and inspire people to uh, be creative and live a fun life. And don't be an asshole. <laughs>